Today we're 9-6, we're going to take a look at the horizontal shift of trig functions. And so we're going to identify the phase shift, which is the fancy word that we call horizontal shift of a trig graph. So remember these are our parent graphs, we have to have these memorized. There's our cosine and our sine parent graph. Cosine starts at the amplitude, sine starts at zero, or on the center line. So in order to shift a trig function horizontally, we're going to add or subtract a linear combination to theta. Now a way to think about it is it's that h. Remember in all of our functions we have f of x minus h. That's basically what that is. Is We have some level of h here that is going to affect how our function shifts. Now just because there's so many other applications for sines and cosines, even though conceptually it's the same thing as an h, we just express it a little differently. And so that's why it says plus c, but it's still one of those things where you're, you're doing the opposite. And so to shift anything horizontally, we're going to do negative c over b. And so the horizontal shift, we call that the phase shift. And so in this example here, if we have two values, let me erase this so it's a little neater. The b part is in front of theta. The c value is what's being added or subtracted. So negative b, sorry, sorry, negative c all over b. So there's my c. My b is just 1. And so I could say that it shifted negative pi halves. Now take a look at the parent function. What's going to happen to my cosine, right? We said it's going to shift over negative pi halves. So my entire graph is going to move over pi halves. So let's look at that again. Everything, literally everything shifted over, everything shifted over pi halves. And so that's what the phase shift does. It's just we're shifting the graph left, we're shifting the graph to the right. Now, not only do we have to worry about just it shifting left or right, we just have to remember that the period change also affects my graph. And that is part of the reason why we say negative c over b, because it's taking into account the horizontal shrinking or the period change that's happening. And so for this one, it'll be it shifted negative pi halves, because negative c over b. But when it shifts, we also have to consider the period change. So after the period change, it gets shifted over pi halves. So everything gets shifted over pi halves. Right? Everything got shifted over pi halves. The entire graph from negative infinity to positive infinity gets shifted over pi halves. Now you're probably wondering, like, man, that's a lot of work. Or, wow, that's, that's kind of intensive when it comes to the, the conceptual part of it. And, it. and it can be, but that is part of the reason why we do the same steps that we did with our period change we're going to do here. Nothing You're going to actually realize that the math that we're going to do, nothing is going to really change. So for example, I can still look at this and I can say my amplitude is 1. I know it's a sine parent graph. Starts at the center line up, back, below, back, right? So there's my sine graph. My period, 2 pi over b, well 2 pi over 1, so I just have 2 pi. Right here I can find my uh, phase shift if I needed to. I know in the steps I have vertical shift, I, I moved things around so we don't have to worry about vertical shift just yet. But my phase shift, negative c over b, and so that's going to be pi force, and that's my phase shift. So I already know that this graph is going to shift over pi force. But the cool thing is if I take that theta minus pi force and I put that between 0 and 2 pi, because normally, right, remember we said that the normal cycle is between 0 and 2 pi. So if I put that between 0 and 2 pi and solve for theta, so I'm going to add pi force. That's going to give me pi force is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to, now i, I got to add these together. 
So we just do that off to the side. 4 over 4, so that becomes 8, so that becomes 9 pi over 4. So we do the box. Pi force goes in the first box. 9 pi force goes in the next box. So we add the ends, divide by 2. So pi force plus 9 pi force all over 2. Okay, well that's going to give us 5 pi force. If we add these ends and divide by 2, pi force plus 5 pi force, that's going to give us 3 pi force. And then if you look at the pattern, it's going up by 2 every time. Right? So you can start making assumptions as you see that pattern. So that means I can label this pi force. Uh, I'll just do pi force for everything. So then this is 3 pi force, 5 pi force, 7 pi force, and 9 pi force. So then following the pattern, start center line, up at the amplitude, back to the center line, below. See, all I did was just transcribe my parent graph onto those values that I found. And then you can draw graph. And that's our answer. So nothing really different happened. We just did a little bit of extra math here, right? We just, instead of just pure dividing, now I had to add something. But we know how to add, right? We've been adding things for a while now. So the math hasn't really changed. It's just, now we just added something new into it. Let's look at another one. So for this one, my amplitude is 2. I still have my sine parent graph. Um, what else could I find here? So we have period 2 pi over b. So that cancels out. So my period is just pi. My horizontal shift, right, negative c over b and so that's going to give me pi force so i know it's going to shift over pi force but we're just going to do the same thing that we did yesterday so we're going to take whatever's on the inside of my graph we're going to put that between zero and two pi so i'm going to add pi halves to everything right we got to get theta by itself so i get pi halves is less than or equal to two theta now this right here if I do 2 over 2, right, if I'm adding pi halves, so that becomes 4 pi halves, so I get 5 pi halves. And then divide everything by 2, I'm going to get pi over 4 is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 5 pi force. Now if you should notice, that value right there represents the horizontal shift or the phase shift. So now doing the whole box dealio. pi force, 5 pi force. So now add the ends, divide by 2. So pi force plus 5 pi force all over 2. That's going to give me 6 pi force over 2, 2 and 3, so I get 3 pi force. And then so this will be 2 pi force, and this will be 4 pi force. Now I don't mind that we leave them unreduced because look, it's easy for me to scale adding one, adding one, adding one, adding one. So we're adding one fourth each time. So I could say that this is a pi fourth, like each of these, so that's zero, two pi fourths, three pi fourths, four pi fourths, and five pi fourths. So sine starts at the center line Then it goes, the next one, it goes up, back to the center line, below, back to the center line, and I can draw my one cycle sketch. And the cool thing about this is because of this, and since I know it increases, if I wanted to just keep going, that's 6 pi force, 7 pi force, 8 pi force. So when it's all scaled like this, it's so much easier just to continue on. And so technically I could just keep going and drawing this forever, right? 
And so technically, even though the question says only draw one cycle, you could technically just keep going on forever and ever and ever, and same thing this way. You can keep going on forever and ever that way as you draw this. So let's close today's lesson. What did we learn today? Well, we learned about the phase shift or the horizontal shift when it, come to, when it comes to trig functions. And how do we find that horizontal shift? Negative C over B. That's basically the formula to quickly do it. Or if you wanted to, when you do that box thing, right, and you find those values in the box, it's the first value in the box that is also your horizontal shift. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.